what can we expect in the next year from this new legislation that's been proposed? Well, um, I am hoping that um, the provisions that survive will include the provision that um, forces the government to reveal all of the operations to cover this up. The disinformation, misinformation, lying to the public, um, using social media to lie to the public, that this will be revealed because if this legislation passes and becomes US law, that will no longer be legal. They will have to tell Congress, not only are we doing this, but this is what we did and here's the reason why. The other part is to open up to the public uh, a means to share information. And then within the US government, including former US uh, officers, US government officers like myself, a means of reporting our uh, knowledge and our experiences uh, to Congress without any fear of retribution, uh, mm -hmm. without any uh, damage to those who are currently serving their careers. And um, so th these are very promising, but also it takes the uh, monitoring of the government away from the government. There, there are the inspectors general, there are the directors and the department heads of these eight, uh, departments and agencies, but it gives the uh, implementation to report what the government knows to the Comptroller General. And the Comptroller General of the United States is a nonpartisan bicameral appointment that is repre representing both sides of the aisle uh, and representing both the House and Senate sides. The Comptroller General is responsible for monitoring compliance with, with this law. The Comptroller General of the United States is the watchdog of Congress. The Comptroller General of the United States, a very powerful position, is responsible for compiling unidentified aerospace and undersea phenomenon records. He is charged with compiling everything. This is the most significant part of the legislation. So he is to review all of the records and documents within the intelligence community, oral history interviews, open source analysis, interviews of current and former government officials, both classified and unclassified national archives, every FOIA, uh, FOIA request ever released about this phenomenon and other historical resources going back to the beginning of all of this, going back to the 40s. He needs to uh, compile and itemize a complete historical record of what the intelligence community's involvement has been with this phenomenon and also report any intelligence community efforts to obfuscate, manipulate public opinion, hide or otherwise provide misinformation about unidentified aerospace undersea phenomena related activities. So anything the government has done in the past to cover it up, uh, all of this, they, it must reveal what, what they did. And the Comptroller General of the United States, it answers only to Congress, not to the president, not to any corporation, not to the Department of Defense, and not to the intelligence community. However, it, the uh, Comptroller General is empowered to get information from all of these folks, pull the information out, because the law says that's your job now. You're going to go and pull information out from these folks, as well as the National Archivists, pull information out, whether it's classified or unclassified, you're in charge now and you will report to us if the executive branch of government has been cooperating. And if not, we will take further action against the non-cooperations. Because in my opinion, I think with a lot of the uh, public researchers who are out there who may have blogs and so forth, that they hear certain things from certain segments uh, of the government and other researchers hear some other things from the other segments of the government. And next thing you know, they're at odds with each other because I have a source, no, I have a source, no, my source is better than your source. And it might be an orchestrated plan to just mess everything up and just muddy the waters even more. That's not gonna happen because they need to fess up that they're doing this uh, and also list what they did. But also the people who are fessing up um, because they have lied in the past, uh, Alessandro's talked about amnesty. Is that there's a whole legal aspect to this? What do you think of 
Yeah, go ahead. That's right. And that's part of the um, uh, part of the legislation uh, to protect from legal liability and reprisals. Uh, anything that a federal employee might have learned about this phenomenon, uh, they need to go through their own inspector general of their agency uh, in order to report this mm -hmm. and to the head of their agency. But if the inspector general and the head of the agency does, they do not provide an answer uh, to an employee's uh, intent to reveal something to Congress, to, to the public, after 90 days, that employee is allowed to approach directly the intelligence committees of the House and Senate saying, I know information and they won't allow me, to, or they didn't give me permission to say it, but they, the clock has ticked. The 90 day clock has ticked, it's out. So now I can come to you as a American citizen serving the US government, I'm coming to you to the Congress to reveal what I know. Wow. Okay, continue, please. This is amazing. Well, we almost finished. Um, so it also requires the archivist of the United States, who is responsible for the uh, National Archives and Records Administration, to look into the National Archives and to include classified information regarding any obfuscation, manipulation, and misinformation of this phenomenon. So let's not just the current holdings of the government, but what's in the National Archives. They need to report everything out to Congress. Congress is now establishing much stricter and more deeper oversight as representatives of we the people into this phenomenon. So basically that's, that's the IAA FY23. It was passed out of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. It is now going to the floor of the Senate on the Senate calendar, and it will be debated. And I'm sure there'll be more amendments to it, possibly. Uh, eventually, it will end up in legislation. And the IAA, based on past history, most recent history, the IAA was never voted up or down as an independent act. It was always incorporated into the uh, Consolidated Appropriations Act for the entire U.S. government. So it'll be in there along with in everything in the government that it needs to fund, whether it be roads or like mm -hmm. transportation or anything. Like everything in the government is under the uh, Appropriations Act, and this ND and this IA will be part of it. So, so that's all I have. No, no, but um, this is so valuable because if this is passed, can you talk about what the consequences of this sort of act will be on the phenomenon, on people's knowledge, on truth? Yeah, easy. Disclosure, a lot of it, and a flood of disclosure coming out because the legislative uh, act then removed the obstacles, the barriers, uh, it also removed the stigma uh, for government uh, employees who know about the phenomenon to come forward to say what they know. And that's been a big stumbling block, uh, especially as we know from our military uh, who are fearful of reporting anything about this because it may affect their careers. But that's, that's no longer in play. Uh, and for both the civilian side and the military uniform side, we're, we are now much freer to talk about this because what was in place as far as like tamping it down, uh, as far as um, misinforming, all of that is gone. Now the truth has to come out and it's in, it's in US law, it will eventually be US law that the government must comply with this law. Mm -hmm. So as far as disclosure, do you think they're going to roll out the bodies and of course the craft area 50? Is that the level of disclosure we're going to have? Or is this like baby steps of disclosure? Well, I think this is a giant step. Yeah. And as far as uh, revealing about what happened to Roswell and if there were bodies uh, that might be within the National Archives, uh, that certainly is inside the CIA. Uh, in the historical intelligence collection. I don't know what it's called now, but previously it was called the historical intelligence collection. Mm -hmm. A CIA officer by the name of Chase Brandon encountered that file or that box of files and he wrote about it. Um, 
as a novel. He novelized it. Right. And that was the only way he could release it. But he was, has been on um, Coast to Coast AM. He has been on uh, various uh, media broadcasts stating the fact that he says, I saw files that irrevocably and irrefutably uh, confirm that what crashed at Roswell was not of this earth and the beings recovered were non-human. He stated that and he said, uh, they won't let me say that because they kind of like were discouraging him from saying it after he went public and he, he decided I need to write a book. I need to write a book about this. So he put it in his book and right. fictionalized it. Mm. I'm going to ask the Hertogs to respond to some of this. What do you think, JJ and Desiree, about what John just revealed as this real revelation of disclosure? Unmute, yes. Well, it's amazing, Alan. It's exactly what we've been waiting for. I know we were really disappointed. You were with us mm -hmm. uh, when they did that last release between the Navy and also the government, mm -hmm. and there wasn't anything. I mean, you compared it to what the 1950s, they were saying even more or the same thing. So I hope that this is really true. There is a real Roswell. There is, you know, a lot of information. So when is it coming out? That's the real question. I love to have the date. That's great. September of next year. Yes. And JJ, you've been on this case since the 70s. You've been researching and waiting for this moment that John is saying is right around the corner. Well, this is a clarion call or a trumpet blast that can open the records of uh, researchers throughout the world who have been in the closet or who have submitted uh, documentation and other uh, theaters of information. As you know, in your book, Desiree, have prepared a chapter and I relate to uh, disclosures that I made in Mexico in 1979 regarding the uh, specimens, some of the details of which were discussed in open, uh, uh, shall we say, sharing with journalists from different parts of the world. Well, this had no real significance at that time because people were rather inhibited for bringing out the fuller story that we had uh, living anatomical uh, players, I should say, diplomatically assigned. And uh, the fuller story will come out when I think we have a more uh, fruitful sociology and psychology that's missing. Otherwise, we simply go back to the dualistic fear or uh, belief situation with no maturity of information content. But Alan, I love how you said, you know, how deep is this going to go? Because it can just be, yeah, that light in the sky probably isn't from Earth, and yes, it's probably an extraterrestrial flying around. Or it could go so deep as to say that our government has been in contact with live aliens, not just dead ones from Roswell. So, you know, really there's a whole gamut that we're still waiting to see what's going to come. 